and we're back. Feeling better today, like physically, body-wise, but was up last night with a fever and slept like shit, so definitely need to get a little bit stim heavy today. So got the pre-workout going. No real preference to this other than it tastes good and is cheap at Supplement King. And like the biggest problem with being back in Canada is that our legislature limits how much caffeine can be in each scoop of a pre-workout. So we only got like 125 mg per scoop. So two scoops only gets us up to 250. But lucky enough, Miana got me something for Christmas that was supposed to be my stocking stuffer that she didn't really realize she had until today because she hit it too good. But legally changed my name to Kyle because I'm going to put some monster in this just to get the caffeine numbers a little bit up. This definitely isn't something I would normally do nor recommend. And like if it were, you know, not a random finding a monster day, I'd probably just have coffee instead of all this pre-workout. But this should give me a nice little pick-me-up. Try not to let the bubbles spill out. Eep. There we go. Give her a little stir. And one more secret ultra special ingredient just to get the flavor right. Diet root beer. This is actually probably going to ruin it. Like This is probably going to ruin the root beer and this concoction. I actually want to taste it beforehand just to... Not terrible. Does this make it better? Vote in the comments below. I don't know, maybe don't vote. I don't I don't wanna I don't want you to tell me how ridiculous I am for doing this, but I wanna find out. For the sake of science, look at all those bubbles. Okay, ready? Yeah. I'm a fucking genius. Let's cut the training. Okay, I'm gonna try. Wow, that's actually really good. Right? I'm impressed. I thought that was gonna be so gross. So pressure is on to try to remember everything I figured out on Sunday and not continue fucking up my pick on squats. So, Fupa Scoot. Fupa Scoot. Do you know how to do it? Fuck, I already fucked up. Fuck. God damn it. Feet first, fucker! Probably a triple. Gotta remember to not put the belt too low right now, too. Like I need me underneath the belt yes. to inflate. Patience on the wedge. Big scoop, 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 scoop. Oh, scoop one more. Yep. Good. Yep, that's good. Okay, yep. Yeah, that's good. Brace and lock it in. Yeah. I think the high bar is just too... Like it's like... It wants to like I want a tip to resist it. I'm not strong enough. Yeah. Right now. Yeah. You know what? Fuck the high bar. Yeah, it's just so much more intuitive to like stack under yeah. and not get too upright low bar. Set the head, lock it in a little bit more. Rib to his ribs. Pull down. Yeah. That looks so much nicer. 
Yeah, at least that works. So. At least we know you can lower it out. Yeah. Down, pull under. Yeah. Head. Yep. Yep. Good. Fuck yeah. Do that again. Yep. Good. Head. Pull down. Yep. Yeah. So, a little frustration's worth it here and there. So those high bars started like, fuck. And in a way, by going low bar halfway through there, I was kind of like avoiding the problem. But by avoiding the problem, I actually solved the problem because I was running the high bars thinking that they would be a friendlier entry point for the shoulders post-surgery, which they definitely were three weeks ago because three weeks ago, there's no freaking way that I could have gotten into a low bar squat. But the high bars were a total clusterfuck. And I was thinking that like with the high bar, I was flaring my rib cage because my shoulder range was still too shitty for getting under the bar. And kind of what I realized like halfway through those sets is like, it feels that like the shoulders have plenty of space. And I was just thinking like, if I didn't have to get so upright, like high bar squat versus low bar squat, like the high bar sits higher, and because it sits higher, you have to get the torso upright to keep the bar over the midfoot. And I was like, if I don't have to get so upright, I bet I won't have to flare my rib cage so much. And like, I just kind of scoot into low bar and I'm like, this feels okay on the shoulders. And then I was like, ah, oh, I can I can pack down. I can, I can pack down and I can stay over midfoot. And it was like, holy shit, this is working. And it kind of made me realize that by chasing the wrong thing to solve the high bar. Like the last three weeks I was chasing the shoulders to try to fix the high bar, which didn't fix the high bar because it's a hip extension issue causing the rib cage to flare. Like I'm missing hip extension. So to get upright, I had to go like that. But because I chased the shoulders, I made low bar available and low bar felt really, 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 really freaking good. And like in a powerful meet, I don't need to squat high bar. I need to squat low bar because I'm stronger there. So yeah happy that I figured that out, even though it is kind of ass backwards, still definitely need to work on getting that hip extension back because I should be able to squat high bar, but at least big problem solved. Yeah, Whoa, like it's such an ugly sumo pull but it's so good for my conventional. Hop! Hop! <laughs> Woo! -wee. And no chest supported row down here, so barbell row it is. going for that thoracic flexion extension and dead. So for a while there, I was thinking I was doing pretty okay at pulldowns, like 
training the Bryce's, he has the same machine as this. We're using like two thirds of the stack, three quarters of the stack, you know, going hard, getting sick pumps, training to failure. And I'm like, Bryce is strong, I'm strong. This stack must be really freaking heavy. And then flash forward to when Cole gets here, I'm like, Cole, come downstairs, check out how sick my pull down is. The stack is so freaking heavy. And he's like, okay. And then he just puts the pin in the very bottom, full stack, bangs out like 30 perfect reps cold. And he's like, yeah, not very heavy. And I'm just like, fuck, I need to get better at pull downs. I don't know how I'm gonna film this thing without it being just pure thirst angle. Holy, I forgot how nasty these are. It's wild how like bad these feel and then how much space feels like is created after I'm done a set and like, I probably should just come down here every day and get some reps in until the extension goes to where it needs to be. Holy, that is way too hard for what it should be. Shameful. I don't know if it looks smoother. Set two definitely feels smoother. Still definitely need more of these in my life again. And running more of these, making sure I'm getting to that full hip extension. Take number 69, trying to figure out how the hell to conclude this one for you guys. I am tired as shit, struggling hard, just want to go to bed and overthinking the crap out of this, trying to make some big, grand, profound points. And like, in a way, it kind of just comes down to auto-regulation because like, I'm tired. Brain no make good words right now. And by continuing to force myself to try to say these magical fancy things that are going to change someone's life, I'm just, you know, kicking myself in the balls and getting more and more and more frustrated with every take. And like people do this in training all the time. Like they come into a session with these expectations that it's going to be this big, grand, whatever thing. And then when it doesn't pan out that way for whatever reason. They get super frustrated because of what they expected it to be. And it's like, your expectations don't matter, whether it's training, whether it's life. What matters is where you are and what you actually are capable of on the day. And, you know, in a way, this might have turned into something more profound than I was expecting just by put it out there and not overcomplicating the shit out of it. So have a good night, guys. I'm going to bed.